And I am here with Dr. Christopher Starr. Now, if you are listening to our podcasts through our ageistraveler.com website, or if you were on Spotify, iTunes, all of the disseminators, you've already heard him. So you know how passionate he is about the issues of ophthalmology, what you should do for your eyes. But I like to have these little private conversations. Private. I put them on YouTube, how private are they? But anyway, between he and myself, uh, because I have another question for him that uh, you'll also be hearing in one of our bonus episodes on Ageless Traveler podcast. So Dr. Starr, thank you for spending a little more time. I um, I love to see geroscience breakthroughs in health. We'll talk about that a little bit in terms of longevity. But there are scientific breakthroughs, new products, new services, bad eyes coming up. And you're very involved with those. You're on top of it. So if you can bring up one of the things that is exciting you, can you let me tell me about that? Oh, absolutely. There, It is a great time to be a doctor and a patient because there is so much innovation uh, and the FDA has cleared a lot of important uh, things that we now have uh, at our disposal for helping our patients. One of the things that we had talked about briefly in the uh, in our prior discussion was this, the Demodex mites, which traditionally and historically was a very uncomfortable conversation for me to have because I had to talk about these parasitic mites that live in our eyelids and in our eyelashes and come out at night and lay eggs and, and scratch our eyelids and create inflammation and red, irritated, bumpy lids and styes and chalazia and dry eye and all these pretty horrible things. And there wasn't any treat FDA approved treatment for them. And all we had were these over-the-counter remedies that might help a little bit, but didn't really cure the problem, which are these mites. It didn't eradicate the mites. And so thankfully, the FDA has very recently approved a product called XDEMV, which uh, you know sort of had statistically significant clinical trials, two clinical trials with very powerful data that shows that this medication is extremely effective at eradicating the mites, at reducing these little collarettes, which are the waxy buildup, the sign you know, uh, that we see as, as healthcare providers who are examining eyes under the microscope. When we see these little collarettes, little buildup, patients will describe it as crust uh, on their eyelids and when they'll wake up and their eyes are itchy and their eyelids are itchy and they're rubbing their eyelids with their fingers and their, their eyes are stuck together and they're red and inflamed and they may have styes. That's what the patient feels, but we see, and it's very easy for us to make this diagnosis. It is maybe the simplest thing that we can do to diagnose it. All we do is say at the slit lamp, when we're looking through the microscope, look down. When you look down, I can see the, the base of all of the superior lid eyelashes. And when I see those little collarettes, I know with a guarantee that the diagnosis is Demodex. And now I have uh, a product that can eradicate those mites. So the discussion about, hey, you have mites, but I can treat this. And we've got something, I'm gonna put you on this medication and these mites will be eradicated in six weeks. And so it's so important that the FDA uh, has approved. First of all, it wouldn't get uh, prescribed if they hadn't. Um, one of the things that some of our listeners know is I used to be uh, the director of a nonprofit and that was called Catalyst Institute for the Delay and Prevention of Age-Related Diseases. And the entire uh, mission was to get things through the FDA. Wow. A lot about getting things through the FDA. And my mantra about things getting covered for us, I will tell you, will not happen if it's not through the FDA. So I have to give that company a big applaud. And I know what I feel their pain you may not know what they went through, but I know what they went through. Uh -huh. This is fantastic. So do you ask your eye doctor for this after you get the diagnosis? How would you get this? Yeah. So I would encourage anybody listening to us uh, talk about this. You know, if you have any of those symptoms that I described, red, irritated, itchy, puffy, uh, styes, chalazia, dry eye, red eyes, irritated eyes, any of these things, you know, of course, you should see an eye doctor for sure. We, you know, a lot of people are are kind of stoic by nature, and off. And, and as I said earlier, these are this is one of the most common diagnoses uh, that we see on a day to day basis. The number one cause of of blepharitis are these demodex mites. One of the biggest causes of dry eye are demodex mites and blepharitis. 
And the vast majority of us suffer to some degree on a day-to-day -day basis, myself included. And a lot of people just sort of think, eh, I, you know, I'm like, I, I'll deal with it. I, you know, I'll just you know, get through my day and stare at the computer and the symptoms, you know, and, but I would encourage everybody listening. If you have any of those symptoms, do not hesitate. Go see an eye doctor. You're not going to be viewed as a whiner or wimpy. No one should suffer. These diseases and these conditions have a major impact on everyone's quality of life, whether it's from the way your eyelids look to the way you feel and you're conscientious of your eyes all day and you're looking at the computer and you're just like, oh, I can't take anymore. And it, you know, it impacts productivity at work. It impacts our quality of life. And these are really important things. And we all want to be happier. We all want to be more productive. And you know, no one should be suffering with eye conditions that are easily treated. So just come on ahead and see one of us and we will take care of it. Now, and if you have the Demodex mites, we have a prescription medication that works. And that's so important. I don't know if anybody could see this. I don't see it there. I, my eye is tearing. And it's tearing because I have blepharitis flare right now. And what you're telling me is like a godsend, I, I have to say. So it is prescription. And please do remember uh, that if you're in other countries, if you go to the right pharmacy, they will take your U.S. prescription because they're owned by some of our biggest pharmacies. And you'll have all that on our show notes. Now, Last question for you, because I know you actually have to go and save the world for better eye vision. What else, right now, if you could wave a magic wand and have something approved or created that would go be approved by the FDA, what would be the one thing you would wish for eye health that you could make happen? All wow, that's, that's, that's a great question. I, I guess my first thought would be in the realm of macular degeneration. I mean, we, you know, and I will say that the, the level of innovation in ma both exudative or wet macular degeneration in the dry or non-exudative form has been robust and tremendous in the last 15, 10 to 15 years, namely injections, injections in the eye, anti-VEGF injections for wet macular degeneration. And actually the FDA just approved something very recently for dry. Um, but I still feel like that's an area um, that, that's maybe the most difficult diagnosis to convey to somebody. Um, cataracts, easy. Uh, glaucoma, uh, similarly, uh, is something that progresses over very long periods of time and we can diagnose it early and, and, and halt the progression. We have effective ways of doing that. Macular degeneration, especially the exudative or wet form, that's somewhere, if I could wave a magic wand, I would have something that de detects it much earlier and um, keeps it from, from getting to a degree that affects vision. And, and it's a very personal to me. My mom had both glaucoma and macular degeneration. She never went blind. And I'll tell you why. She had a great ophthalmologist. And she went. And she did have her cataract surgery. Uh, I take glaucoma uh, tests, field tests every year, once a year. So far, so good. But please, guys, don't let this go. And I'll say this, uh, you, you know, this is a travel show. So why am I not just showing you pictures of Peru? Because there are plenty of pictures of Peru. I really want you to be healthy when you travel. And some of the things we're going to see when we travel is art and buildings and gardens. You want to see them, right? Okay. So that's why we talk about eye travel health, particularly more than any other issue. And look who we've got with us. Thank you so much, Dr. Starr. You really are a star when it comes to this. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really enjoy talking to you. This is a great resource for a lot of people, so I'm excited to be part of it. Hey, and for you guys, please subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. And of course, go on our agelesstraveler.com. Subscribe, it's all free, to our Facebook salon where we have great experts in the area of travel and safety and life engagement for you every single week. And uh, also listen to our podcast, whether it's on our website or even better yet, give us a nice rating on iTunes and Spotify. And for now, never stop traveling.